Okay, so if you're actually pretty good in basic math, well then you should be able to answer this simple math word problem without using a calculator. So let's take a look at the problem. It is the following. You start an eight hour work shift at 6 p.m. If you have 25% more time to finish, what time is it? All right, so we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 10 p.m., B is 11 p.m., C is 12 a.m., and D is 1 a.m. All right, now try not to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to go through exactly how to solve this problem step by step without using a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So you start an eight hour work, an eight hour work shift at 6 p.m. If you have 25% more time to finish, what time is it? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is C, 12 a.m. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you did this without a calculator, well, you get an A++. Plus plus. So congratulations on your uh, knowledge of percent and just figuring out a simple math word problem. Now, for those of you out there are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, um, I'm confused. I didn't get this right. You know, what should I do? Well, first of all, let's just recognize that it's okay not to get a math problem correct, right? So learning math is all about trying problems, and if you don't get it right, figuring out what you know and don't know. But in this particular case, you know, if you are a math student and you have to take a math test, well, one thing that uh, you should be uh, really super happy about is that we have a multiple choice question here. So you have a one out of four chance to get this thing right. So yes, indeed, guess. And a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am a professional math guesser. Well, that is fantastic. I was one of those as well way back in the good old days. But uh, let's just take a look at um, our answers here. And when you are taking a guess, you just don't want to take any random guess, okay? Now, if it comes down to you being like, I have no idea, well, then just take a guess. But let's take a look at this answer, A, and talk about why it is definitely wrong, okay? So 10 p.m., right? If we start our work shift at 6 p.m., so here's 6, here's 7, here's 8, here's 9, here is 10. So how many um, hours is 10 p.m. from 6 p.m. Well, it's one, two, three, four. So at 10 p.m., you only worked four hours of your eight hour work shift, meaning you have another four hours to go. So I think most people uh, would say, well, if I only work four hours of an eight hour work shift, well, that's only 50% done. Okay, it's certainly not 25% more time to finish. So this would be an obvious wrong answer. So when you are guessing, you know, you should try to eliminate things that are kind of obvious. But uh, if this was an open-ended question, in other words, we didn't have a multiple choice question here, well, we're just simply gonna have to know the math to figure this out. All right, now we do have a math word problem and uh, you always wanna use the rule of three and that is read a problem at least three times before, before you start doing anything and make sure you really understand the question. So here we wanna figure out what time it is when we only have 25% uh, re remaining on our eight hour work shift that we start at 6 p.m. Now we have a lot of information here. Well, maybe not too much, but uh, uh, you know, it's always a good idea to try to take the information in a math word problem and model it, okay? If you can kind of visualize it, then oftentimes you'll be able to see an easy path to figure out the problem. And this is where you can be creative. And I'm gonna show you how I'm going to look at this information. And it's not, um, you know, the, uh, the good thing about this is that the way I do it doesn't have to be the way you do it. Okay, as long as you understand it and it is clear and logical and, you know, helpful, well then, again, feel free to use your own special kind of approach. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this approach right here. And I'm gonna uh, kind of visualize the problem in this manner. So I'm gonna kind of create a timeline. 
So I'm going to start my little eight hour work shift at 6 p.m. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out what time it is when I only have 25% remaining on my work shift, right? Now, what does that mean? Well, if uh, I only have 25% remaining on my eight hour work shift, that means I already worked 75% of my shift. So I'm kind of looking at this and for me, now this isn't the only approach you could take, but for me, I'm gonna say, well, if I could figure out what 75% of my eight hour work shift is, how many hours that is, well, I can add that to my 6 p.m. time and that's gonna get me to the time where I only have 25% uh, remaining on my eight hour work shift, which of course is the answer to the question. So at this point, I'm gonna say, all right, you know what? I'm gonna focus in on figuring out what 75% of eight hours is. Now, this isn't the only strategy, but this is the one that I'm gonna take. Again, the reason why I'm taking it is because I can kind of visualize what's going on. All right, so 75% of eight hours, how can we figure this out without using a calculator? Well, I'm gonna show you a kind of a long approach that you can kind of uh, use, and this would be pretty good for like mental math as well, okay? So 75% of eight or eight hours, how can we figure this out? Well, maybe we can break up this 75% and think of it as 50% plus 25% because we can easily figure out what 50% of eight is, right? So what's 50% of eight? Well, it's the same thing as one half of eight. So we can kind of see that right here. If I asked you, hey, what's 50% of eight? Most of you are gonna be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's only one half of eight, which is obviously four. So that's pretty easy. Now, if we could figure out what 25% of eight is and then add it to 50% of eight, then we'll have the right answer, i.e. 75%. All right, so what's 25% of eight? Now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, 25% uh, is the same thing as one-fourth of eight. So a lot of you could just kind of reason through this, but I'm just kind of showing you um, different models, different approaches that you could you know, use if you want. But let's go ahead and take a look at kind of a common sense approach here to figure out what 25% of eight is. Well, if I know that 50% of eight is four, okay, well, what's 25%? Well, I could simply take that 50% and divide it by two, that's 25. Well, then I have to um, take my answer for 50% of eight, which is four, and divide that by two as well. So we have two. So 25% of eight is two. Okay, so now that we know that 50% of eight is four and 25% of eight is two, well, then we can easily figure out what 75% of eight is. So 50% uh, and 25%, if we add these together, that's 75%, so we're gonna add the answers. So four plus two, of course, is six. All right, now this is kind of a long approach to figuring out what 75% of eight is. I'm gonna show you uh, the direct math here in just one second, but I'm just kind of uh, showing you different mathematical models that one could use, especially if you're trying to do quick mental calculations or if you totally forgot how to find the percent of a number. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't stop this lovely math video if I didn't need your help. Now, YouTube really does like when people subscribe to people's uh, channel and hit, uh, when they hit that notification bell as well. Now, I need you to do that. You know, of course, it's up to you whether in fact you are gonna do that. But, you know, it's my goal to reach as many people as possible that want to learn math. What I try to do on my YouTube channel is to try to make math clear and understandable and interesting, okay? And definitely, uh, you know, I don't like to try to teach math in the same way that you know, it's kind of typically taught in a lot of classrooms. And that's no knock on any math teachers out there. But my YouTube videos are kind of informal, you know, uh, instruction. But if you need additional help with mathematics, check out my uh, full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And we are talking about basic math concepts here. So you might wanna check out like my math foundations or my math skill rebuilder course. But either way, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would definitely, you know, um, you know, appreciate it uh, for sure because, you know, YouTube, you know, is very com uh, competitive. You know, just think about it. We're constant. I'm a constantly on YouTube watching other people's videos. There's a lot of information out there, so I definitely appreciate you spending some time with me. All right, so let's get back to this problem, and uh, I want to kind of talk about 
how we can find 75% of eight. Now I showed you kind of a long approach, which was, well, if we can figure out what 50% is and 25% is, well, the total there is 75%. But if you understand percent, well, then you can figure this out quite easily, i.e., what is 75% of eight. Now, here is my question to you. Let's just review uh, what percent is. So what is percent? Okay, so here is our 75%. Well, percent by definition is when we could take this number and compare it to 100. In other words, we take this uh, the percent uh, number, i.e. 75, and we create a fraction where the denominator is 100. That is the definition of percent, is comparing a number to 100, where the denominator, basically it's a fraction where the denominator is 100. So 75% is the same thing as 75 hundredths. And for those of you that remember your decimal place values, that's the same thing as 0.75, right? So uh, most of us out there will be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if you want to find 75% of 8, just take this, turn it into a decimal, so that's 0.75, and multiply it by 8. Well, that is correct, but uh, if we're not going to be using our calculators, I'm not going to really want to uh, work with decimals. So 0.75 is the same thing as the fraction 75 over 100, and we can reduce this fraction 75 over 100 to 3 fourths, right? So 75% is 3 fourths. So all we have to do is take that 3 fourths and multiply it by 8. All right, so we have uh, a fraction being multiplied by a number or another fraction. Just put 8 over 1. So 3 fourths times 8 over 1 is what? Well, 4 goes into 8, 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So there you go. So 75% of 8 hours is 6 hours. All right, so those are two ways you can figure this out. But now we can kind of go back to our little model and answer the question. All right, so we started our uh, work shift at 6 p.m., and 75% of the work shift is six hours. So that is the same time when we uh, complete 75% of the work shift where we only have 25% to finish the, finish the shift. All right, so all we need to do is take the six hours and add it to the 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. plus six hours is what? Well, six plus six is 12 or 12 a.m. All right, now this is one approach to solve this problem. Uh, some of you out there may have uh, took, it, took a different approach, and that's perfectly fine. As long as you can kind of, um, you know, show your work in a logical manner, that's what counts. It's not only one way to solve a math problem, but uh, you're not going to get better at solving math problems unless you practice, right? Now, before you start to practice math, you got to make sure you understand the underlying skills and concepts. So if you're struggling with percent, or fractions, make sure you go back and review those concepts and then practice, practice, practice. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.